Welcome back to our channel, and in today's video, we bring you the latest updates on a growing geopolitical concern. The South China Sea dispute has taken a new turn as the U.S. Navy assumes a proactive role in the region. Join us as we uncover the details behind this pivotal move and its potential impact on regional stability. The South China Sea has been a focal point of territorial disputes for years, involving multiple nations and conflicting claims. Recent developments have intensified these tensions, prompting key players to reevaluate their strategies. At the heart of this dispute are the contested waters of the South China Sea, where valuable trade routes and significant natural resources are at stake. China's expansive territorial claims have raised concerns among neighboring countries and have led to growing unease on the international stage. In response to these rising tensions, both the Philippines and Japan have announced their participation in joint military exercises. This strategic collaboration signals a unified front against potential threats to regional stability. The Coast Guards of the United States, Japan, and the Philippines are set to launch maritime exercises in the South China Sea. In the first such drills between the three countries at a time of growing concern about China's activities in the region. The exercise in waters off the Batan province of the Philippines will begin on Thursday and last until June 7. The drills come as Washington ramps up military diplomacy in the region, staging more frequent war games with allies and partners in the South China Sea, the waters around Taiwan, as well as the Western Pacific. China, too, has increased drills in the strategic waterways. It has conducted military exercises with Laos, Singapore, and Cambodia this year and is set to send warships to a multilateral naval exercise hosted by Indonesia this month. Armin Bellalo, a spokesperson for the Philippine Coast Guard, told reporters in Manila on Monday that the trilateral drills were an initiative of the US and Japan, while Australia would join as an observer. Four Philippine vessels, and one each from the US and Japan, will participate in exercises designed to improve search and rescue collaboration and law enforcement, he said. The Philippines was approached by Japan and the US about holding joint maritime exercises in February, the same month when Manila accused China of aggressive activities in the South China Sea, which Beijing claims almost in its entirety. This is a usual routine activity among Coast Guard agencies, Balillo said. There is nothing wrong with holding exercises with your counterparts. The US, Japan and Australia have frequently condemned China's militarization of the South China Sea and have sought to engage more closely with the Philippines since Ferdinand Marcos Duterte took over as president last year from pro-China predecessor Rodrigo Duterte. The Philippines has been increasingly vocal about China's conduct in the strategic waters, including over its alleged use of a military-grade laser against a vessel supporting a resupply mission to a ship in the disputed waters. Balillo said the upcoming maritime exercise will include counter-piracy simulations and possibly an interception exercise involving a vessel carrying weapons of mass destruction. China is also making a push to deepen military engagement with its southerly neighbors. In May, China held a rare joint military drill with its landlocked neighbor Laos, as well as exercises with Singapore in the southern reaches of the South China Sea. And in March, China and Cambodia held drills in Cambodian waters for the first time. The Chinese Defense Ministry said on Wednesday that it will send its destroyer Jianjiang and frigate Suchang both equipped with guided missiles, to the 2023 Multilateral Naval Exercise Komodo, NNEK, in Indonesia's Makassar. Jakarta has invited 47 nations, including North Korea, Russia, South Korea, and the US to the drills that will run from June 4 to 8. China is also planning the joint drill with some countries of the Association of the Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, including Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam. The drills are named Amana UE 2023. Relations between China and the US have been tense, with friction between the world's two largest economies over everything from Taiwan 
and Beijing's human rights record to its military activity in the South China Sea. Close on the heels of joint patrols by China and Russia in the region, the navies of the US and Japan are holding military exercises in contested waters of the South China Sea. The Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force Izumo-class helicopter destroyer JS Kaga, DDH-184, and the U.S. Navy Carrier Strike Group, CSG, one are conducting bilateral operations in the South China Sea, said a statement by the U.S. Pacific Fleet on Monday. While in the South China Sea, Japan and U.S. Navy units are conducting maritime security operations to include flight operations, coordinated tactical training between surface and air units, refueling at sea evolutions, and maritime strike exercises. The statement added, Bilateral operations are one key component in our collective maritime readiness, said Rear Admiral Dan Martin, commander of the CSG-1. The Indo-Pacific is a dynamic region, and by continuing to conduct routine operations with our allies and partners throughout international waters and airspace, we demonstrate our unwavering commitment to upholding international law, on the sea and in the air, and to ensuring that all nations can do the same without fear or contest. Last week, the Chinese and Russian militaries conducted joint patrols and held their first joint passage through the Chuguru Strait in the Japanese archipelago. Early this Monday, Japan expressed concerns about what it called an increasingly severe security situation surrounding the country. The Japanese Defense Ministry said five Russian Navy ships sailed through the Sea of Japan after they sailed around the country's shores. The same Russian ships had previously formed a flotilla with five Chinese ships that had sailed around most of the Japanese archipelago, the ministry added. The two navies parted ways last Saturday. China's assertions in the South China Sea are based on its nine-dash line. Purple dashes on official Chinese maps that denote Beijing's historical claims on the sea. Beijing has refused to acknowledge the presence of the U.S. in the region, dismissing it as interference by an outsider. Despite China's warnings that the sea should not become a battleground for big powers, a recent study found the U.S. surveyed the South China Sea on an almost daily basis in the first half of this year. These military drills aim to enhance coordination between nations, foster stronger diplomatic ties, and promote a sense of collective security. The involvement of the United States Navy further underscores the gravity of the situation. The U.S. Navy's involvement in the South China Sea sends a clear message that freedom of navigation and adherence to international law are paramount. This move reinforces the commitment of the United States and its allies to uphold a rules-based order in the region. Past conflicts and historical tensions in the South China Sea have demonstrated the potential for escalation. The international community is closely watching as these developments unfold, with a keen interest in how they might impact global stability. As tensions continue to simmer in the South China Sea, the joint military exercises involving the Philippines, Japan, and the U.S. Navy reflect a concerted effort to ensure peace and stability in the region. The evolving situation reminds us of the delicate balance that must be maintained to avoid further escalation. Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to like and subscribe for more insightful updates on international affairs. Until next time.